Hello. In this video, I will show you how to easily migrate a Microsoft SQL Server database into Postgres. I will use a tool that I created when I needed to do this same task, and I publish it on GitHub so you can download it and use it for free. For the sake of this uh, demo, I will use the AdventureWorks sample database from Microsoft, which I uh, went ahead and installed locally. You can see that it has a bunch of different schemas with a bunch of tables, like for example, human resources schema with a bunch of tables and person and production, etc. I also created an empty database and this is pretty much the command, just create database and I named it AdventureWorks with the lowercase and underscore. Um, and that's pretty much the only difference. I went ahead and downloaded the release uh, zip archive and extracted it locally. So the first thing to do here is to take a couple of the example files that come with it and I'll copy them here into the running directory. where we will execute the script. So let's go over the files briefly. First thing is the readme file. Uh, it uh, explains the steps that uh, I will cover in this video. Then we have the batch file, which sets a few variables just for ease of uh, reuse and then uh, builds a Java command and executes it. And then the more important or more interesting stuff is in the config file, which is actually a JSON file. So it has uh, some properties, for example, the name of the migration project, which I named here AdventureWorks. Uh, it uh, specifies a template to use which means that uh, your script file can be, your config file can be very short, doesn't need everything because uh, much of the configuration settings will come from the template, uh, which we'll cover soon. And then it sets some other information. For example, uh, information schema dot database name in this case uh, will be used by the template by the information schema that query in the template. And anything that's in the template can be overridden here uh, if it uses the same keys, the same path of keys. So before we go to the template, let's just cover a couple of other things here. Uh, we define here two connections. One is named MS SQL. Uh, it uses the JDBC driver from Microsoft. And for the sake of this demo, I'm using Java system properties to pass in the username and password in case you don't want to include them in the config files. The second connection is called Postgres. And here we define that the source of the migration will be the MS SQL connection and the target will be uh, the Postgres connection. Then there are a few other settings here that I uh, defined. Um, some of them are just for the sake of uh, demonstrating the capabilities. Others are more, I would say, required because they make sense. Um, so for example, schema mapping, the DBO schema will be mapped into a public in Postgres. The human resources schema will be renamed and mapped into a schema named HR. Uh, the tables, some of them are very long, they have very long names. So in this case, I just uh, changed it, changed a few, I don't know, like I shortened what, uh, didn't make much of a difference. We can actually do something like uh, PMP, the 
C. I don't know. Then there are some column mappings. Uh, for some weird reason, uh, there is a column named database version with a space in the source database. So I map it into db underscore version. Um, and there are a couple of columns that use uh, keywords like group and primary. So I renamed those also. And then I specified a couple of transforms for the table names and the column names. And the transform that I'm using is a camel to snack case, which will uh, transform something like uh, my table name with a capitalization to my underscore table underscore name or lowercase, which is more standard and works much better with databases that adhere to uh, rules. Let me save my changes because I changed something here. Let's take a quick look at the template that we're using here. So the template defines uh, configurations for MS SQL Server. And anything in a template can be overridden in the config file that is using the template. So for example, uh, if the template is defining uh, uh, DML threads 4, which means four concurrent connections will be used for the migration, then you can easily uh, override that with something like DDL threads 2. And that will cause it to use only two connections at the same time. Uh, some of the more interesting things in the in the template, at the information schema query. So you see the information schema and then inside it there is a query. And this is a SQL code that will select from information schema columns and tables and uh, will uh, gather and determine which tables or views uh, will be migrated. Now you can see here the table catalog which is another name for the database name, is using the percent signs, which means that this is kind of like a variable. This will be evalu evaluated at runtime, and it will look for information schema dot database name, and that's the reason that we set here information schema dot database name to adventure works. So at runtime, this will be populated with adventure works and that query will be executed. Now, the tool has two modes or two commands. One is DDL, which will create the objects, and the other one is DML, which will copy the data. And they have kind of different settings. So for example, in DDL, you can specify whether to add a drop schema uh, command at the top of the script or not. Um, it also adds the SQL type mapping. So for example, it maps the bit uh, type from Microsoft SQL Server to Boolean on Postgres or date time to timestamp with time zone uh, and text to text, etc. It also specifies some regular expressions uh, which can will be determined, which can help determine some defaults. So, for example, uh, if a column has a default of get date, it will set on uh, Postgres and a default of current timestamp. On the DML side, you specify, for example, the number of running threads. Uh, and some of the JDBC type mapping because these are slightly different from the SQL types. In general, you shouldn't uh, touch these unless you get some errors and then if you can report them, we can figure out what exactly needs to be fixed and I would, like, uh, would love to improve the tool further. So now that we've uh, <clears throat> seen what uh, the overview of the tool, 
let's go ahead and run it so I will open a command prompt and I will run the migrate uh, script with the DDL command let me increase the font here a little bit and I got an error let's see why I got an error okay the error is at line 84 of the config let's see what we have here at line 84 oh I forgot the colon here that should fix it okay so let's run it again with the DDL command and it shows it says that it uh, using the config file that was specified it also using config file of the template uh, because that's what's specified in the config file itself and now it tells us that it created the file for us with the SQL extension and actually we can see it here and this is the file that was created right now so you can see everything runs inside a transaction we create the necessary schemas and then for each table uh, we have the create table command and you can see for example that uh, the tables were transformed the names and the columns of the names of the columns and the tables were transformed so for example if the original is a let's see here a dbo dot aw build version in common notation then it was transformed into public dot aw build underscore version uh, or lowercase uh, you can also see the defaults as I mentioned so for example instead of get date we have timestamp on the defaults and computed columns that the tool was unable to uh, determine exactly how to do there is a comment which you can see so for example there's a comment for this is computed of this thing in SQL Server or this one is a default of new ID um, so anyway, let's go ahead and copy the script. You can run it with the PSQL very easily if you're familiar with that. But uh, since I'm already using dbeaver here, let's go ahead and create a new script. I just copied and pasted it. And now let's execute it. So it executed without any errors. And now, as you can see the schemas I'll refresh them and now you can see a bunch of other schemas that were added by the tool so now we have HR instead of human resources according to the specified uh, transform and uh, mapping you can see the underscores with lowercase and everything uh, same thing for the different columns so for example uh, business underscore entity underscore ID and you can see it in the other database in the original where is it employee let's see um, was it in this one or in that one I don't know business entity ID yeah so that part worked so now let's run the tool with the DML command. So as you can see here, this is strange because I specified the number of threads to be two instead of four, but it's still running in four. As you can see, it does four tables at a time. Um, I'm not sure exactly why. But I'm sure there's a simple explanation. So it completed and it generated this file, 
which is a log file, but it's also a script file. So if you look at it, you can see, uh, let me change this to SQL real quick. So you can see there's a lot of, uh, all the log comes in comments, but then also you have some recommendations. So for example, the identity column has a max value of six, so it recommends you to restart it with 1000 or whatever. And this one is a max value of 20,777, so it recommends you to start with 21,000. So this is actually a SQL script that you can run <coughs> as well. And I wonder why that didn't work. So the reason that uh, it ran with four threads and not with two threads is that I've placed the threads under DM DDL instead of DML. So that should have been the right directive. Oh, and by the way, now that we copied the data, you can actually do, uh, if you want to look at it, then you can, let's see how we select here. I guess we can do that. Or not, I don't know, let's do this instead. From hr.employee. So you can see that the data has been copied. Uh, I hope that uh, you find this uh, tool and this video helpful. Please let me know because uh, I would love to get some feedback. And uh, for now, I only created the SQL Server uh, template, but the tool is built in a way that will make it very easy to add other uh, database management systems. So please let me know if you found it useful. Thank you.